had a nervous breakdown when I was 13, and um, I was committed to a mental institution for two mm. years. And um, during that time, I told my mother about the abuse, and she denied she knew the first person who abused me, and she said she didn't believe me about the rest. Mm. And we lived in um, the city, my family and I, and um, my parents fought constantly, and there was not a lot, a lot of love and nurturing in our family. You want to reach out to somebody, and there's nobody there to reach out to. There's nobody there that wants to love you. Hi, I'm Julie Woodley, founder and director of Restoring the Heart Ministries. We produce the In the Wildflower series to help men and women find healing in Christ following the trauma of childhood sexual abuse and other types of abuse and trauma. The great miracle of God's restoring work is that broken people are finding hope and healing. The Wildflower series is used nationwide and in other countries as well. In this video, you'll learn the freedom of telling your story to others. This allows the release of shame, anger, sorrow, and the pain you feel. It also provides a way to understand what your true desire is and how to experience living as God created and intended for you to live. Jesus said that if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Our desire is that you would allow Jesus to set you free. Sexual abuse can really affect us emotionally, physically, sexually. It affects us in so many ways. And I'm so proud of each one of you here today that are willing to come and to share your story. And some of you may have struggled with depression, anxiety. You may have struggled with obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, um, eating disorders. Uh, you may have struggled in your relationships, in your marriages, in parenting. Some of you may have struggled with post-traumatic stress, where all of a sudden the symptoms started to come back, and you were starting to question, what is this about? I don't remember anything about this, but now it's coming back. Some of you may have struggled with having such severe trauma that you've split out, or you had to disassociate. So sexual abuse affects us in so many ways. And as you share your stories today, we're going to trust that God is just going to lead you. Every person's life is a story and you cannot understand them and who they are and why they are the way they are until you hear their story. You meet a woman and you wonder, why is she so hard or why is she so frightened or why is she so resentful? You'll never understand that until you listen to her story. And so we have to have these environments where we can tell the stories of our lives because it's in the story that you discover the why. Why we are the way we are, what happened? And what we've done with what's happened to us. And many of us have also been impacted spiritually and our views of God have become distorted and it may even be difficult for us to trust others. And so I'm wondering if we could start. And Janine, would you be willing to just share with us your testimony? I was born in 1967 in Baltimore, Maryland. My father was stationed in Baltimore in the Army where he met my mother. And they started an extramarital affair, and I was a product of that affair. Um, my mother had me believing that my father would leave his family in Detroit for her. So shortly after I was born, 
he said he had some errands to run. He got on a plane and never came back. Mm. So that left my mother very bitter uh, towards me. Um, but she kept me, I think, hoping my father would come back. Uh, when I was four, she left me with a friend of hers. And I remember I was wearing my favorite yellow sweater and he called me downstairs. And he raped me on the sofa. Um, shortly after that, my mother began sending me to live with my father's family in Asening because she was just very resentful that he had left and, and not taken her, chosen her over his wife. So she sent me away to live with them where um, my older cousin Douglas began to molest me. Um, that went on for on and off for about the next six years. Um, my mother would send me up pretty much every summer. So eventually she began to, sh to leave me with friends of hers. Um, so to wrap it up, between six and 10, I was molested by four diff eight different people, four males and four females. Um, I made my first suicide attempt when I was nine and I began drinking and smoking. Now I'm at a point where I, I know intellectually that the Lord loves me. And I've experienced His love in some very real and tangible ways. But there's still a part of me that believes like my mother did, that He'll abandon me. When somebody is abused as a child, you have to remember what a child is. A child is somebody who is being shaped. They're malleable. They don't know very much. And so if during the course of being shaped, they are sexually abused, particularly if it's a repeated thing in their lives, the abuse becomes one of the most shaping influences. And so it is out of the context of the abuse the child learns what is good and bad, what love is or isn't, what trust is or isn't, and who they are. And oftentimes, perpetrators will tell the child, you know, if you weren't such a bad little girl, I wouldn't have to do this to you, or something of that nature. And so those things become the control beliefs for the person in the future, for their view of themselves, for their view of the world, and for their view of God. Mm -hmm. 